approach to do a house in Lucknow by one of our older clients. Now, the imagery that immediately comes to your mind when you say Lucknow is that of a Lucknowi Haveli. And we were quite kicked up about it. But when we had a detailed conversation with him, uh, he mentioned that this house was being designed as a space for him to meet his siblings and parents, all of whom lived in different parts of the UP. And as children, they would always come together when there was storytelling happening in the house. And usually these stories were from the epic of Ramayana. So he requested if we could bring elements of Ramayana into the house through design. I mean, aisa brief kis ko milta hai. So we designed the house based on Valmiki's Ramayana. Now there are about 300 variations of the story available. We chose Valmiki's Ramayana as it was the most popular version. Now each zone of the house is based on a certain chapter or kand of the epic. And the story gets narrated through art and craft. We love the idea, love the process and we love the end product. The story of Ramayan starts with the Balkand and the story of our house starts at the foyer. So the foyer was assigned the Balkand and we have a console there which has sketches from Devdutt Patnaik's books which represent this chapter. Then the foyer also has a huge, very beautiful artwork by Prasoon Mazumdar which represents the entire Ramayan. If you look at it, it looks like Ram. But if you look at it closely, you will see Jatayu on the head, you will see Surpanakha on the face. It's a beautiful artwork. The story then moves on to Ayodhya Kand. Ayodhya Kand is the part of the story where the trio of Ram, Lakshman and Sita leave their palace and they move through the jungle. They keep traveling. So all the passages in the house, all the stairways, they've been assigned the Ayodhya Kand. If you look at the passage, the main passage that connects the foyer to the living room, you see we've given it a groin vault ceiling and we've given it a mosaic flooring. The wall of the passage also has a Madhubani, handcrafted Madhubani mural, which again talks about the same chapter. The next two chapters are the Aranya Khand and the Kishkinda Khand. Aranya Khand is the part of the story where the trio settles down in the forest and Ram also holds darbars with the common folk. They settle down in a cottage in the forest. So the living room has been designed to resemble a grand darbar and the bethak, which is an extension of the living room is like that of a cottage. The bethak has Artworks from all over India, for instance, the pillar that you see is a Chetanat pillar. Shelves that you see are from JNK. The brassware that you see is from Muradabad. It also has a very biophilic approach to the design where you see greens stacked behind the Windsor design sofa. The living room has a jhula which has been brought in from south. It has a very beautiful rug by Jaipur Rugs and it has a beautiful artwork by Neeraj. The dining room which is attached to the living room takes a story forward and you see a mural representing Shabri feeding Ram. Now that's the epitome of uh, treating your guests the right way. So you have that and under the mural you have a handcrafted deer console by craftsmen from Saharanpur. the dining room is where Kishkinda Khan has been represented. We decided to represent Kishkinda Khan by a space which is dedicated to birds and animals. The next two chapters are Sundar Khan and Yudh Khan. Sundar Khan talks about introspection, so the spaces assigned to it were the family room and the bedrooms. Now the family room also has an artwork by Clayman which represents the Vanar Sena. It also has the puja room attached to it because of the religious connotations. The bedrooms take the story forward. For instance, the shears in the bedrooms are all local chicken curry shears. 
The artwork in the mother's room is actually a set of six botanical prints which are trees that appear in the Ramayana. Yudhkan is a chapter that couldn't be brought in as a representation inside the house, so it was taken as a landscape element in the garden. It has a gazebo with greens around it representing Lanka, which was supposed to be absolutely green, it still is. And it has the symbolic water body that you cross to get to the gazebo. And with that, we come to the end of the epic with the master bedroom celebrating the arrival of Ram back to Ayodhya. Now the room has grandeur and it has handcrafted luxury elements. For instance, the headboard is a product which has been crafted by craftsmen from Saharanpur. It has a ceramic jali partition between the bathroom and the bedroom. The bathroom itself is an absolutely luxurious uh, design that we've done. It has handcrafted tiles on the floor, a beautiful standalone tub, a crafted vanity, and mirror with lights on it. And that is how we have narrated the story of Ramayan through art and architecture using local crafts as a tool. It is a project that we've loved doing and is very close to our heart as it has social sustainability, a cause that we truly believe in at the core of the design. We loved it and we hope you love it too.